I'm Dave Levin, and I'm not just a comedian or a writer. I'm a humorist. Why? Because it sounds like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> See? Told you. Thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Oh, yeah, no problem. Appreciate no it. Problem. So now your name? I'm Dave, I'm Dave Levin. Dave Levin. Yeah, yeah. Now? I'm a, I'm, I'm a writer, like more writer, producer, and then I guess comedian as well. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, but mostly I want to, I came out of here to write and create, like, a, what I really want to do is create television shows and, and, uh, and do that kind of, you know, create television, create and produce television. That's right. it. That's why I'm out here. So now, where, where are you originally from? Uh, I was born here, and then, uh, but raised in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, then went to school in um, in Tempe, like the, just because it was two hours away. I wanted to get out of my mom's, uh, you know, wrath. Right. And so I got out of got out of town, and then um, I got a broadcasting degree, and then came out of here. Oh wow. I, I learned to screenwrite uh, in Arizona. The Arizona oh, yeah. Screenwriter Association, the EZSA. Oh yeah. yeah oh, that's where, where where was that? In Phoenix. Uh, in Phoenix? Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. We used to we I hold um, uh, weekly table read, uh, reads. Uh, oh in, wow. Uh, in Mesa. Uh, yeah, that's actually one thing I wish I had done more was is more creative writing than mm -hmm. um, than than just broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't real I didn't realize what I wanted. to do you know you you're like oh I want to like create shows, but I thought maybe like reality. I wasn't sure if I needed to write or whatever, and it just right. kind of. And then as soon as I got out of here, you, you just kind of learn and you kind of figure out. I mean, I think that's what's great about LA is you come out here and you, you kind of with an idea of what you want to do, and then it becomes it gets more in focus. Right. Yeah. You know, you you're like okay, well then, how do I do that? Yeah. And then you kind of figure it out and you fuck up a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot, yeah. and then you know, and then you might end up, you know, hopefully you'll land where you're supposed to be. So did you come out here to be a writer, or? Uh, no, I just kind of came out because I wanted to do production and just kind of wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to work in TV. I knew I wanted to kind of write or, or make, you know, like I guess I wanted to write jokes, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So were you trying to get like a, like a TV writing gig, like? Or yeah, or? well, like I worked on the Wayne Brady show when okay. I first when I first got out here, and uh, I was a PA for a while, and then I moved up to an associate producer. Like, I would set up all the field shoots, and but it was it was terrible. It was always a clusterfuck, and uh, I I got the ultimate. I didn't get along with the producer, and I got the ultimatum of uh, either uh, get demoted or walk. And I was right. like. Well, fuck it. I don't need. To, I'm not going to be a PA again. Yeah, yeah. Eat my ass. I'm out of here. Yeah, and true. then for five years later, I was a PA. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, I probably should have taken. Well, I mean, I don't really regret the decision because you know, you yeah. You, know, you held your own, and uh, it was actually great because getting out of that world, I was able to work in um, scripted on scripted shows. I worked on. Jack and Bobby was my first one, and then I've worked on like tons of canceled shows. Jack and Bobby, uh, Studio 60, Windfall was a terrible one with Luke Perry, mm -hmm. but he was cool because yeah. um, he would come in, um, come into the production office eating jerky and uh -huh. fucking around. He was a cool guy. So as a PA, you were working on these shows, or yeah, PA, and then a writer's assistant on like Dirty Sexy Money. Um, I was a writer's PA on. 
on brothers and sisters. So, how how was that kind of game? Was that getting you in the writing rooms? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, brothers and sisters kind of got me in the writing room. Dirty sexy money. I was in the writing room every day. You know, that's cool. I mean, taking notes and just learning. It was it was the best experience. And like, yes, I want to do comedy, but learning from these great dramatic writers, these playwrights. And people, that, you know, it, learning so much about story structure and and uh, character development. And, you know, you can write the jokes. You yeah, know, I'm I'm a funny person or whatever. You know, but it's it's about it's about learning the the structure and, and also the machine of television because it really is a machine. You know, you you pump out twenty two up twenty two or twenty four episodes a year, and but every week you're you're like you're 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 uh, breaking one, you're writing another one, you're shoot, you're prepping one, mm -hmm. you're shooting one, and you're and you're in post on one. Wow! Everybody. So you got like five or six script, you know, five or six uh, episodes, episodes yeah. like where you're just, and it's con it's just a constant cycle. Oh, wow! So, but it's but it's great. I mean, that's what I want to do. I love it. I love I I love the cycle. You know. Yeah. Um. So it was it was, it was nothing but a, a great learning experience. Did you end up getting an agent or anything from that? Or? No, I mean, no, 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 just a lot of bizarre stories, and and uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm working with one of my old writer, one of the old writers that I worked with now on on the script, um, but because he, what basically he called me into his office and said, "What are you doing for the next four days?" I said, "I don't know. What do you need me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an assistant. I'll do whatever you need me to do." And, so he sent me to Minnesota for four days to look for his uh, his uh, f family friend. Their autistic son went missing. Oh wow! So, so he he, he paid for me to, to join the search party. <laughs> oh wow! So that's a, so you're <laughs> a representative. I, yeah, I mean I've done everything, man. Like I've I've uh, you know I've gotten I've done deliveries and gotten chased by raccoons. I've uh, you know. Why? I, I'm not sure. I don't know why I keep going, you know? Like, I've done, like, almost, like, weird drug deals for caviar. Like, they told me to get, like, some discount caviar. So I went to Calabasas, which is way out in the valley. Mm -hmm. There is not water around <laughs> at all. Yeah. And you're getting, and you're, and you're, you I met a guy at a gas station to pick up caviar <laughs> for the writing staff. Wow. And I was like, should we do, you know, should we go to the bathroom and make this, you know, deal official? He's like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was like offended. <laughs> that was, uh, really? Yeah. You're meeting me at a Chevron. <laughs> With caviar. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when, there's a picture of this, this case of caviar coming in this trunk. But, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... But that's, I mean, that's what I signed up for. I mean, I was, yeah. like, willing to do whatever it takes to, to kind of learn. And, you know, you hope that these writers, and what, you know, these writers want to, like, help you out. And, mm -hmm. But, I mean, they're in it for themselves. Right. They're, they're trying to do their own thing. And, you know, as soon as that show gets canceled, they're looking for the next gig. Right. You know, they have a family to feed. And, I, you know, and I'm, you know we're, we're all trying to do our... We're all trying to do our thing, and honestly, we're all selfish. We, I want to, you know, I don't want to just work on on a show. I want to create a show. Right. You know. Yeah. So. Do you feel that uh, the comedians are more helpful to help each other than the writers are? Um. Yes, I, I actually do. Like, I think. I don't. I don't, I don't even know if it's comedians, but I think it's 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 actually been cool, like working with Brian and working with Adam, and a couple other comedians. Like, I think. Well, they also want to use me because of, like, the knowledge. It's like we get to use each other. Like, right. I want to, they want to be on camera, and I want to write. Mm -hmm. So it's, it works out perfectly because we're both getting what we want right. out of the deal. And uh, none of us are, like, we both get creative control. We both, we are both getting exactly what we want. And I think that's, that's what helps. So regardless, like, I think that's why I can work with actors or with other directors or, you know, it's like, as long as you're getting what, as long as you're getting what you want and I'm getting what I want, we can work together. Yeah, yeah. But like with a writer, they're like, you know, I mean, I guess I can help you out, but it's also, you know, it's also like, you know, they have so many people that they that that they have to help out, and you know, it's just you have to get in line, you know, like everything else. Yes. 
It's uh yeah. <clears throat> so what's one of your biggest struggles that, that you've encountered out here? Um, I think it's just it's getting it's getting your script read. It's right. the hardest thing. Um, getting people to watch anything that you've shot and put together. You know, put together. Uh, you know, I've worked with Adam on a couple of those pilots, uh, like the Cougars of Comedy and the, his ADD, and then the thing that I co-created, which is the Real Pilots of North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Just getting people to watch it, agents interested, and then and them not to see it with a skeptical mind. Right. You know, because they immediately look for any flaw to say no. That's what that's what they're looking for because they don't really want to they don't want to put the effort into helping you out. Right. So they're looking for a way not to help you. They're, they're li like, literally you have to like, I think Adam was right, where you, you basically have to say, all right, here's how I'm making money. Now, do you want to make money as well? Right, yeah. Great. Then fucking help me and pay for it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I have to prove myself. I yeah. have to prove that I'm, that I'm, that I'm doing it already. Yeah. Or at least it's commercially viable, you know, and it won't piss off anyone. You know, which is not going to happen with me because I'm going to piss off people. Because right. you know we're we're artists and we also like to push the issue. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I'm you know I also come from a, a you know a background where I don't see things the way that most people do. You know, I'm I'm Mexican, I'm Jewish, and I have a black sister. <laughs> That's a comedy bit right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's mostly what I talk about. Yeah. That's probably according to Swan. It's probably all I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it that and yeah, now I'm gonna start in, into my overbearing mother stuff. Okay. That's a, that's also another struggle is is just is I you know, I can't wait for that one phone call where my mom's like actually happy that I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Where instead of like, you know what you should get into uh uh what is it like uh she wants to get me into um occupational therapy. Uh -huh. I'm like, I wanna go back to school. <laughs> yeah. I burned the bridge. Like it's like I made this path, and I literally burned the bridge behind can't me. Back, yeah. I can't go back. I mean, I might have to, but I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm not going back. Right. But it's yeah, it's tough. Yeah. So now you've uh, been doing the stand up. How, how's that going for you? Is it... It's good. You know what's what's great about stand up is that it to me it's it's a it's a way to um, connect with the audience. It's not about trying to get a, like an assistant or a studio executive to read something and they might not get it. It's seeing another person and trying to make them laugh. And that's it. Oh, wow. It's just a, a simple, pure thing. And it's also, it's also like I, uh, I was a musician for the longest time. And the greatest thing was, was, to, was to play drums in the band and get an immediate reaction from, from the audience. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that when you write a script or you shoot a movie yeah. or any of that. Right. With, with stand-up, you get that. Gratification. You get that instant gratification, but you also, but it also opens your mind up to uh, possibility. You know, to like, how how do I get become a better writer? How do I like? What's a better tag for that joke? How can my um, how can I relate to the audience? Which is stuff that you know helps as a stand up, but also helps with my writing and my producing, my directing. Is how do I reach that audience? Wow. You know, how do I make them laugh? How how do I uh, prove prove myself in my you know my fucked up head? Mm -hmm. How do I connect? How do I connect what I see in my head and make you laugh? Oh, yeah. Which is which is a tough thing. It's a yeah. tough thing to make people laugh, you know. And I think, you know, and I think you know, all the comedians that you probably interviewed and all that. I mean, I'm sure you know, they you know they just do it, but it it's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to, to make to make somebody laugh. Because I, I read this article one time, and it's totally true. 90% uh, of people are on the verge of tears. It is easy to make somebody cry. You write a dramatic scene, they'll fucking, you know, you'll yeah. cry. I, even, you know, with your, with your tattoos, I'm sure you'd tear up a little bit. Maybe yeah, not. Yeah, Maybe yeah. not. Maybe, well, <laughs> the only thing that'll make me cry is E.T., but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a lot of people, like, it's hard, I think it's a lot harder to make people laugh than it is cry. Well, yeah, it, do you find? I mean, like I've been told that my, my scripts are funny, but I can imagine if I was to do that shit on stage, I probably wouldn't play as well. You know, right. do you find that being on stage makes you a better writer? Yeah, it does. But it's also <laughs> it's it's also a completely different muscle. Mm -hmm. 
like it's it's a it's a completely different thing to write a scene that's funny and you you can't do that on stage right. unless you want to do sketch or improv and I'm not a fan of either. Right. Well, I am a fan. I don't know. I had a bad girlfriend. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to the girlfriend. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I like girlfriend. She, you know, no, but whatever. It was it was the attitude of the improvers that mm. made me a little angry. But anyway, the point is <laughs> that's not the point. The point is 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 the. Uh, it's an, I think I think that stand up and and writing a script are two different muscles. That's why some some comedy writers aren't stand ups at all because it's it's completely different. Yeah. But I think it. I, Again, uh, you guys didn't have this. I had this. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think it. I but I think doing stand up helps yeah. completely because it because again it, you connect with the audience mm -hmm. and. You find out what what they think is funny, not what you think is funny, not what what's in your head, and you're you're typing, and you're, you're working twelve hours, and you're in your little room, and you're like, oh, that's hilarious, you know, mm -hmm. oh my god, that's hilarious. I love the buzzer. I think it's great. Right. It actually happened at the perfect time, and uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, instead of just being in your head, and you actually. All right, like I'm gonna take what's in my head and I'm gonna try it in front of the audience and see what happens. And uh, I mean, the jokes are different, but you know, I mean, they're either gonna laugh or they're not gonna laugh. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't know. So, um, but I think, yeah. So that's great. Is, is that the answer to your question? I know. It, it works. <laughs> there's, there's stuff in there, you know. Well, you, you, I can I can say it again if that. Would no, no, that's cool, man. It, it, yeah, it, you're like, yeah, believe we're, me. We're like, you're, we're you're talking enough. enough. Yeah. So yeah, that's all <laughs> It tastes like it's a goal. So, uh, how often do you travel outside of LA? A uh, couple times a year, not not too much. Ever, when when uh, whenever some some uh, uh, comedians want want me to travel with them, I'll, I'll I'm like, really? Okay, I'll go with you. Um, but but for the most part, I I stay here and, and I work on the on the writing and the producing. And this is the place to get that done. You think, right? yeah, yeah, I think the the place to get that done. I mean, I'm working on. Uh, a documentary myself where we're, we're getting the money to, to shoot that and uh, you know working on the writing and, and different scripts and trying to get it sold and I, I feel like you know this is the place to do it have you had uh, any successes on the writing have you got some options yet or I mean I've gotten I've gotten the options I've gotten you know but then nothing happens right. with it, you know so it's like you know it's a piece of paper that says I, I'm I'll make this and but then th that piece of paper doesn't mean anything yeah. Give me a check, you know. <laughs> that's that's what I want, you know. I want the I want the check. I want you know, development deal, great. You know, that's what I want. You know, I don't want just somebody saying, okay, we'll we'll make this. Well, that's cool. Can yeah. I get paid for it? Yeah. Are you gonna actually do it? You know, it's like a it's a whole nother thing. You know, I mean, people people are starting to like what we're what we're doing, what I'm doing, but it's, it's just that constant grind. It's just getting your name out there. Mm -hmm. Getting them to read it. Getting yeah. people to read it. Getting people to watch it. Yeah. You know? Totally. So. That's, it. that's cool, man. Um, now you've been out here, you've been trying to make it out of here. Do you think that, uh, say, Vancouver Studios picked up one of your scripts and said, dude, we're going to make this TV show, but we need you to move out for the next six months. Would you go out to Vancouver and move out there? No problem. No problem whatsoever, man. I would totally move out to anywhere. Vancouver. Yeah, anywhere. Just to, just to get a chance to do this would be amazing. To actually make a living writing and producing, no problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, L.A. seems to be the place for it, but if somewhere else is calling yeah. and cutting me a check, you got it. Well, you're, a, you know, you, you, you're <laughs> trying to get some uh, t you know, scripts and stuff going. Do you, do you feel that reality TV might be the demise of some of this happening? No, because I think it was for a while, but it, everything goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. Um, if you look at right like a couple years ago, reality was the biggest thing, mm -hmm. and then kind of drama took over for a while. Like there was drama, and and then um, uh, reality as well. But now it seems like sitcoms are coming back a little bit because the economy's in the in the shitter. You know, it's like that. Hopefully, I th I think stand up or like I think not only stand up but I think sitcoms are coming back because people are going through a shitty time and they want to laugh, mm -hmm. you know? Um, 
do I hopefully these sitcoms d will deliver um, because they're green lighting a lot of them right now they're, there's a lot of new sitcoms coming out uh, I don't think they're going to be that funny why because I'm not writing on them yeah <laughs> but you know they, they might be good no there's some good there's some good um, scripted shows on there right now and I think they're there's only um, it seems like network like even cable networks are starting to do more scripted shows like yes it's cheaper to do um, yes it's cheaper to do reality but there's nothing there I mean there's it's just it's kind of entertaining but now it's just like you don't know who this person is and they're like hey I'm famous and you should watch me and find me interesting while I stand in line at Starbucks right yeah who are you yeah. why am I watching you and I don't, you know, and like, I don't care. So what do you think about these people being famous for being famous, like the Heidi's and Spencer's? I think it, I wish they would go away. Or maybe, you know what, go, they should all go to an island and, and kill it, and kill each other. I would like to see, I would like to see them, like, you know, fight, fight to the death. Right. See who survives. Delta I think Paris Hilton like, would survive. <laughs> I think she would eat everyone alive. I think she'd probably wait out for a while. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I think she would hide out. Yeah. She would like have like a like a cool club that everyone tries to get into, yeah. and then she would like murder. You know, like As wait till they get drunk and then murder them. Yeah. Well, I would. I think we're developing something here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that maybe that's it. You know, maybe yeah. No, I I think they're they're. All, I I hate the fact that people are just um, getting famous for being famous. I think I think it's I think it, it it sets a bad precedent for society and I think it sets a bad precedent for for art like people come out here with you know and they're like with you know with no craft they're like you know I don't, I don't want to act I just want you know I'm here yeah. I'm amazing so what so is everyone else you know it's like I feel I feel like this town has rewarded too many people for doing nothing and they should reward people for doing something. Listen, I'm not saying you even need to reward me. Well, I would like you to reward me, but I'm not saying you need to reward me, but reward somebody that's actually doing something, writing something, mm -hmm. acting at something. Great. Yeah. Give them that chance. There's so many people out here that are willing to do it that are, that are amazingly talented, mm -hmm. you know? Well, how would you change the business? I mean, how would you change the um, industry? I think the one thing, and it is, it's a tough thing to, to, to say, like, oh, I, you know, I know how to change it. Because, I mean, it's obviously been successful. It makes billions of dollars a year. Uh, the only thing that I, would, I would, would love for people to change is their mindset just a little. Where it's like, you know, they... They really go, like, the studio executives are really all about, like, has this person done something? How, what, what have I seen them in? Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, I don't know if that would work. They see it from a, you know, business sense, and they should. And it's totally right. But the one thing that they could change is maybe giving people that have worked as assistants, you know, that are new blood and are cheaper, like, give them a chance and see what they can come up with. Mm -hmm. Because... We, we know what, what we're doing. We've, we've studied it, you know, and we've actually actually shot stuff. But give us a chance to do something. We'll do it cheaper, and it'll probably be funnier. So I, I wish people would give, you know, the unknowns a chance a little bit more. You know, at least, at least not as skeptical. Like, you know, not just the, you know, waiting to see a disc and immediately saying no. Like, right. just watch it. Yeah. You know, sure, there are no stars attached. Sure, it's it's a little it might be a little controversial, but there's probably but it is funny. There's you know, I don't know. So do you think a, like a public studio, like a government ran public studio would help the people make that kind of stuff? I don't know, man. I mean yes and no. I mean I think it all depends. Again, it all depends on who's running. Mm -hmm. Because if you get some, you know, bureaucrats running it, they might they might want it to be just educational. Yeah. They might want it to just focus on certain things, whereas it's not it, where you want somebody that that has Honest. that me men yeah. mentality of like I want entertainment. Yeah. I want things to make me laugh. I want things to make me cry, and I want to see some shit blow up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's you you want. I mean, it's a it's a tough thing. I mean, 
But don't get me wrong, like, you know, the executives have a tough job. They, the, they're, they're on the line, you know, they have to, they're putting their neck on the line and saying that this project that I'm greenlighting is going to make money. Right. And if it doesn't, I lose my job. Yeah. So they have to, they have to eliminate all risks. But the problem with doing that is I feel like they're losing viewers. Yeah. And they need to start taking more risks instead of less. Oh, more risks. Well, they're going to get fired in a couple weeks anyway. Right, they're gonna like listen. If 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 my project isn't gonna get you far, the next one will. Right, so might as well take the risk. Yeah, might as well take the risk. But no one wants to stick their neck out, and that's the problem. That that's the one thing I would like to change is people wanting to take risks. Because I th I th I think I think I mean I mean I'm a risk taker. You're obviously a risk taker. We we all we all are out here to take risks. Right. So why is Hollywood not taking? Well, Hollywood used to. In the 20s, 30s, that's the way it used to be. They used to pull the trigger on controversial shit. That right. Well, right. Think our it's, generation that's coming up is going to be that way again. I think that we can bring that old style. I would love to see style. that old style because I feel like, I feel like right now, and it's and it's actually similar to the 1960s, if you think about it like these, uh, with the rise of like some independent, like some, some of the smaller independent movies mm -hmm. where the... Um, where they would have these huge, big, dumb releases, like these big movies, and then they would have like smaller movies with smaller budgets, and hopefully that you know again the and the triple features, and, yeah, the yeah. Tri triple features, and also the independent movies of the '90s. You know, the economy was in the shitter as well, and all these independent filmmakers came out mm -hmm. and changed and yeah, changed Kevin the lamps. Kevin Smith, Smith. Kevin Smith, Quentin Tarantino, yeah. you know, all those guys. Yeah, you know, and. But then again, you know, it happened in the '60s too, with um, you know Warren Beatty and and uh, you know uh, Francis Ford Coppola and Steven Steven Spielberg and all those guys, you know, did lower budget features and then you know got got the break and and um, you know, made it. I don't know. So in the double digits hit here, uh, what do you call this time? It's gonna be our break, right? We're right. Well, I think it's also like there's just so many people like and, and the Steven Spielbergs aren't going anywhere. Right. But, it's like you know, uh, there's so many people out here trying to do this. It's it's tough. It's tough to get that break, and you feel like you have to, you know, find whatever open crack there is. So do you think if there's a boost of production, you think there'd be more breaks, maybe? You think, uh, that yeah. People have an option. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, I th I I would love to see, personally, um, studios, um, and Paramount starting to do this. I guess they greenlit. Twenty hundred thousand dollar features, right, yeah. and I would like to see more of that. Mm -hmm. Like, let's see if there's some new filmmakers out there. Yeah. You know, instead of instead of making fifty million dollar features, let's make fifty one million dollar features, yeah. and let's let's see what hits. Let's see what works. Because one know? of them should make fifty million. You know, what one of them will make fifty million. One of them, one of them will make fifty million, and also you know, there's probably another shit. another ten in there that are good. Yeah. And there's a probably another ten that are just as good as uh, uh, you know, um, was it Alvin and the Chipmunk, yeah. Chipmunks, the Squeakquel, right. and then there's probably about five that would be perfect for DVD release, mm -hmm. you know. So you're you're making money in some ways, but then again, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't know, I I see both sides, but you know, so, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> so when do you see this going in the next five ten years? We see uh, Hollywood head. Um. I definitely see the internet is gonna is gonna take over. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe that the internet is because um, I feel like Hulu made two hundred million dollars in ad revenue mm -hmm. last year. It's only gonna go up this year. Yeah. Um, different different corporations are starting to see that people will watch movies or will watch movies and TV shows on the web, mm -hmm. and so therefore it becomes about the product than the network. So it's all, it all be, which which is which is great for you and me because it's all about the product. Mm -hmm. It's well whether people will tune in and watch what what I've created or not, you know, which is which is great because then because then the people decide what is good instead of the executives. Yeah, which is great. So the internet is actually be a positive thing. It can be, but it's also filtering <laughs> through all the crap. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, you have. You know, me putting something on on the on the internet and it gets maybe like five hundred or uh, views or maybe like seven thousand views, but I have you know 
but I'm not getting a million hits and I think my stuff's good. So is it finding a voice or is it, you know, is everyone watching a uh, dancing cat? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Believe me, I find a dancing cat interesting too. You know? <laughs> it's great. Actually, that keyboard cat is hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where the guy gets hit, like any accident happens and then somebody yeah, yeah. plays the piano. Um, like me doing this interview, somebody's gonna play. Then the yeah. keyboard cat's gonna come out. <laughs> so, what advice would you give to somebody uh, such as yourself coming out to Hollywood now? Man, that's a tough. That's a tough question. Because I think, what advice would I give? I think it would be come out here with an open mind, see what happens, because it kind of is. Because I think, um, I think it, it, it is about, like, you find your path. You don't know where it's going to be. You don't know what kind of opportunities you're going to find. But I think you just got to keep going and yeah. just kind of see what happens. But you have to, you have, to have the initiative and, the, um, and you have to be kind of dumb in a way to just, like, even though somebody's telling you no, 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 you say, you know what? Fuck off. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to find my path. Yeah. And so it's not really, I guess it's not really dumb, it's just tenacious, it was tenacity, yeah. be, be tenacious, and don't take, the, don't take no for an answer, but learn from your mistakes, learn from every experience. Any film that you do is a learning experience, it's, you know, it's, you know, any film, any script, you, you become better, so just learn from, from your mistakes and keep going, yeah. that's all I would say. I think on that we'll, uh, we'll close. Appreciate you taking the time. Cool, man. man. Thank you so yeah. much. Let me get one more uh, shot from you.